Kia Fano, Dr. Fee here. I want to do a really, really short video on how to um, put your annotation up on your annotated bibliography. A little bit about how, how to write an annotation too, but not too much of all this stuff. Um, we've got heaps of videos up on how to do annotations, so I'm just going to really take you through the very, very basics. So, to start off with, what I want to take you to is the very fancy program that I have, which I told you I've got around um, 10,000 references in, tell a lie, I've still got uh, 144 references to go before I hit the 10,000 mark, 944 references. The program I use is EndNote. Um, you, if you want to have a fancy program that you can store everything on, you might want to get a program that's free on the web called Zotero. So in EndNote, I get to not just um, use it as a reference tool for Word, but I can actually store the articles as files. I can take notes on them, and um, I can do quick searches. It becomes a massive library. You'll see me using it um, in the literature review video. So here's my EndNote um, library. There's up the top here we get Fiona's a nerd. She's got 9,056 references in. If we click on this one, which is a... Um, Blakeman, Shane Blakeman, who is like the key subcultural theorist in the world today. Um, I can find that here's a journal article from him. Um, I can see it's a journal article because it gives me a title for a journal called Deviant Behaviour. That's what I'm going to see on the top, on the cover and on the spine. And then the article itself is called Subcultural Theory and Historical Contemporary Assessment. Um, most um, articles have an abstract, and there's my abstract here. So that gives me the author's summary. And if you come to this top bit here, I can find out certain things about this journal, such as uh, is uh, here, it is a volume 35, so that it's had 35 years of publications. It is issue 6. So it's the sixth issue of the 35th year and the pages. They are very, very important. I don't even have to worry about the DOI article number. So I've been busy reading this and I've actually been reading it for a purpose. It's one of the latest articles that I want to um, be using for some of my own work. Um, I am very interested in new subcultures. And I've done a little bit of a scan, so I've gone through first and I've read the abstract and I've gone through and read the, the, the um, headings, so I've read the title, um, I've read a heading called Origins, Errors and Misunderstandings and the first usage of subculture, that to me was a really, 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 really um, interesting reading but, um, heading because it tells me that there's been some errors in the use of subculture. Um, from that point, after going through and reading the headings to get an understanding that's looking at the history of the theory. I have then done a sex reading and I've gone through and I've highlighted the very first um, sentences to each paragraph. So you'll see that there's one sentence here and there's one sentence here and um, there's a middle sentence in the middle of the paragraph and one sentence here. After that I've gone through and done a close reading um, that's what meant. Uh, that's why I highlighted this sentence because it explained to me what this sentence was about. Um, to correct this error and misunderstanding, I'll demonstrate that indeed the concept of subculture was first applied at the Chicago School, and its use and understandings was influenced by the anthropology and work of Emil Durkheim. For the first application of the term within Chicago, we find that. So that second bit just explains that first bit a bit more to me, makes more understanding, and then I put some notes to the side. Not sociology, but cross fertilization of an anthropology, um, sociology, I would add it to that, psychology and biology. So I've added some notes to that. I've pretty much done this all the way through. So what I was taking you through in class is the way that I would read. Okay, then what I tend to do is sit back and, and actually just give myself a verbal summary. I have just read Shane Blackman, and what I found out is that I have been brought up academically on a lie. I am pleased that I found this out now because I have been teaching a lie for the last few years. It's a good thing that Shane Blackman's 
wrote this article in 2014 too because I would have felt a little bit ashamed if I hadn't have read this earlier. But anyway, what I have found out is that I normally teach what most people teach and that is a place called the Chicago School invented the word subculture. That is not true. I have now found out that it was actually in, in Chicago at the same university, but it was across many disciplines. Um, and then when it was taken to England, the, the concept was first put on to young people who were seen as um, not belonging to society, social outcasts. But then in the 1960s, under the Birmingham School, um, it was they used some Marxist ideas about hegemony and resistance and said actually subcultures have a voice of resistance and a social position. And now today we tend to focus less on the voice of resistance and look more to style and we tend to say young people can have many journeys through subcultures. So I've summarised itself verbally to myself. I feel like I have a bit of an understanding about it. Now I go to do my written summary. So here we are. This is my first cut at my written summary. I'm trying to get this as big as possible. I might zoom, see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you, but I'm very much aware that sometimes you can't see it. Okay, so remembering I wanted to give mana to the author first, that's going to help my referencing. I only have to do it once in the paragraph. Shane Blackman, 2014, explores the history of the theory of subcultures. He argues that the term did not start in the Chicago School of Sociology as most people think. Instead, he explains that it originated in discussions about subcultures across disciplines of anthropology, sociology, psychology, and biology. So I'm basically putting everything I've summarized there into sentences. And you'll see that my sentences are actually very short. I write like I say you should write. But what I've also noticed is I'm aiming for around 150 words and my summary is already too big just after that. So what I'm going to do now is just do a quick shorten. So um, he argues that the term did not start as most people think. Uh, he um, Instead he explains that it originated in discussions. I might even just take that instead out. Put a capital. Across disciplines. I'm going to take all that list of disciplines out. I still check that's a complete sentence. Does it make sense in itself? He explains that it originated in discussions about subcultures across disciplines. Might just add the word various in. Um, control various. It also developed out of Chicago and across various disciplines and Chicago School Theories of Deviance. These theories argue that communities share a common identity and deviance occurs when this identity is being threatened. So I'm trying to take words out, make the sentences shorter, getting it down. I'd keep doing that until um, I've got my 150. So you probably see Fiona's, um, Fiona's idea. I can take a lot of these words out at the beginning. I'm not asking you all to do this. It's just, you can see Fiona suffers by verbal diarrhea, not just in writing, um, talking, but also in writing. Okay, so we'll just uh, assume that I've got everything down. And... I've got my summary, which finishes saying well, it's got Marxist ideas, consumer culture, and flexibility. Um, while I agree with the development of theory, um, it does not. Um, do not use. Don't, it doesn't. Do does not leave anything with apostrophes. Try to leave out. It does not um, fit within the reality of my practice where young people still use subcultures to voice anger and resistance. Now I'm going to have to again get this down to my uh, 150 words. 
If you end up with 200 words, don't panic too much about it. But what I'm going to do now quickly, so here is my, uh, uh, my annotation, my own summary. What I tend to do is I'll copy that and I go back to my EndNote and my notes and now put my annotation. So if I was to search for my Blackman, yeah, subcultural theory. I'll find a notes. I've always, always, always got my summary. Now I'm going to make my little reference for that. So I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way, not through Microsoft Word. Because I use EndNote, that pops up here. So Blackman, comma, last name, comma. Initial with the author, which is an S, 2014. Uh, the title of the article is sub... Please forgive my spelling. Historical and... Contemporary assessment of the concept for understanding deviance. Okay, where did I get that from? I got that from this bit here. Now, what I'm going to put in italics is the title of the actual journal it is from. So that is from Deviant Behaviour. So I'll put that in italics, finish that full stop. Volume. So how many years has it been in production? 35 years. Volume. 35. Issue. 6. 6. Control tab to get back. Issue 6. Pages. 496 to 512. 496 to 512. Full stop. I'm now going to select that. Then I'm going to left click with my mouse. I'm going to go to paragraph and I want it to be a hanging paragraph. So indentation special hanging. Okay. So there you go. I have now got a complete annotation um, with the actual reference at the top. So that's my very first annotated bibliography reference. I've selected it all. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any red lines underneath, which means spelling mistakes. I see that there. I'm going to left click. doesn't come up in the dictionary, but I know I was meaning community, not commiswamping, whatever that was. So I've checked it, it looks good. I've read it out to someone, um, had it proofread. I've looked at all my sentences, even these long ones, to make sure that they all make sense in themselves. And I select it, and then I press Control C to copy. I come to my Moodle, go to Specialist Practice. I then Da, 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 da. Come to my annotated bibliography, assignment one, annotated bibliography, um, Blackman starts with B. So I add a new entry. The title of my entry is going to be Blackman. Blackman 2014. I then put my annotation in the definition folder file. Now, this is not necessarily going to give you the hanging paragraphs. Don't panic about it. I was just showing you how to do it on the word. Yep. And then I save it. And voila, I have an annotation now in the annotated bibliography. Another example is in W from me. This is white. I think I have to edit this slightly, which I can. If I click here, edit. All I need to do for this edit is something I forgot earlier. That was put uh, um, paragraph there. So Blackman and White, two annotated bibliography references, all ready for you to go. Um, so, yep, cure all, and I hope this helps. Um, Fiona, signing out.